All right, now question four. Okay, a super lengthy question, as you can see, takes up the whole screen, so no place to write. Anyway, so the first thing what we have to do is to find the f inverse for this function. So, well, let us get started. We have to first thing have to scroll down a little bit. Uh, why not just scroll all the way? Okay, now what we have is an f x that looks a little like this. Okay, one over one minus x square for the domain of negative one. Uh, excluding 1 to 0 including 0 okay so this is our function and to find the inverse okay it's not the difficult thing at all so we just let y equals to 1 over um, 1 over 1 minus x square cross multiply okay or you know just reciprocate both sides we have 1 minus x square as 1 over y Okay, and of course, what is left to do is actually not that difficult, isn't it? Just make x squared a subject, so x squared will be equal to 1 minus 1 over y. And therefore, x will be equal to plus minus the square root of 1 minus 1 over y. Now, the trouble now is, okay, you know, the same type of questions as we see earlier on is, you know, which one do we choose? Or, or which one do we reject? You know, the positive or the negative? So we have to rely a lot on the graph. So if you go to your GC, and if you were to sketch this graph out, okay, now it looks rather awful, a, a curve, isn't it? But bear in mind, the domain that we are interested in is only from negative 1 to 0. And now if you were to filter out the rest of the parts of the curve, okay, you will get a curve that looks a little like this. Okay, so um, negative 1 is your asymptote, vertical asymptote, and when x is equal to 0, you will get 1. Okay, so this is our fx actually, okay, for this domain. Well, there are other parts we know, right? Yeah, but what we're more interest, most interested in is only this part. And the domain is what we are going to focus on now, because for this domain, it's actually the left-hand side of the curve. Okay, we mentioned earlier on that on the right hand side of the curve, the inverse will be the positive root, and on the left hand side of the curve, the inverse will be for the negative root. Now, if some of you are a little bit confused by what I'm saying here, please refer to the previous question, question 3, there will be one um, example or one question on specifically something like this that I mentioned earlier on. Okay, so what we do is we will say this since the domain of f okay is equal to negative 1 to 0 okay and therefore our f inverse x okay will be the negative part of it so it will be negative root of 1 minus x square okay and of course we must define the domain for our f inverse isn't it so the domain of f inverse will be the range of f and from here we can see rather obviously that the range of f is x um, sub it means an element of um, between 1 to infinity okay inclusive of 1 so the bracket please make sure it is a square bracket okay because well your x can be 0 and therefore it can take the value of 1 and therefore now the domain of your f inverse becomes something like this okay so this show shall be the answer for the first part now let's take a look at the second part let's scroll up again now it's getting oh here. Alright, now figure 1, which is this figure, shows the graph of, well, y equals to e to the power of negative x. Oh, okay, I didn't know it looks like this. Okay, but never mind. Now let's move on. Undergoes a series of uh, transformation, okay, from figure 1 to figure 3. So one transformation after another, okay. And uh, now what we want is the resulting graph, okay, which is this graph in figure 3 okay shows the graph of a function h so this is actually a function called h so we're supposed to figure out what is uh, this function h all about well let's figure it out let's screw it out a little bit again oh no i think we need to take a look at the graph as we talk okay let's take a look at uh, this series of transformation all right now the first figure to the second figure what did you well, what do you figure it out to be okay well I think it's rather obvious okay that from figure 1 to figure 2 it is actually a reflection along the x-axis okay so figure 1 the function is e to the power of negative x and to figure 2 which is the reflection along the x-axis it is a negative fx 
type of transformation so it becomes negative e negative x it looks a little like this okay now from figure 2 to figure 3 this is interesting okay now it is actually a translation to the left side by one unit okay so well we know that what kind of transformation is this is actually um, from f to become f x plus 1 okay remember that x plus 1 means you shift to the left so well in this case it's a shift to the left so what we need to do is to change our x okay I'm sorry this should be negative x uh, sorry negative e negative x x becomes x plus 1 so this will make it into a shift to the left by one unit alright so to the left to the left so f no not f hx will now have this function of negative e negative x plus 1 okay and of course what is the domain well the domain is from 0 to infinity so well x will be greater or equal to 0 okay which is given to us in the first place so now this is our hx okay let's move on to the last part find the rule okay done and the domain of h okay done uh, we got it yes this is the answer and show that f of h exists oh f of h exists okay now definitely we need to scroll now further okay we don't need a graph anymore so but something like this will do okay now the last part of it okay now we have to again write the grandfather's story well for f of h to exist okay the condition would be that the range of h must be a subset or equal to the domain of f so the first thing that we want to figure out will be the range of h so the range of h will be equal to uh, oh well we, we need to figure once more so let's take a look now this is our hx okay so from the diagram it is rather obvious that the range of our hx will be from negative 1 over e to 0 okay so the range of our h will be from negative 1 over e to 0 excluding 0 because x-axis is the asymptote and uh, including negative 1 over e because x can be equal to 0 okay now the next thing would, that we would want to really find out would be the range of f and I think this is not a big problem because the range of f is always given to us okay so the range of f is from negative 1 to 0 inclusive 0 but excluding negative 1 so well if you are a little bit unsure okay you can actually use the calculator to figure out what this value is okay now for those of you who are you know more alert huh, you will know that e is actually a constant which is 2.71 something so 1 divided by 2.71 something is actually only 0 0.5 blah 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 isn't it okay or at least close to 0 0.5 about half so negative half to 0 will definitely be smaller than negative 1 to 0 isn't it okay so definitely we know that well the range of h is a subset okay of the domain of g and therefore well our fh will exist okay and there we go uh, what do we need to do next is to find the range of fh okay how do we find the range of fh now this is interesting okay range of fh now there is no need to find the function fh itself okay I mean you can but in this case we, we really don't need to right? because if you understand the concept of the the, the composite functions uh, the story of the x so called um, this shouldn't be a problem for you at all okay well what we do is this now since we know that the range of h is a subset of the domain of f and therefore we know that well the range of our f h will also be a subset of the range of f but knowing that the range of f h is a subset of the range of f doesn't really tell us much okay because what is the range of f well the range of f is from the range of f yeah here okay from 1 to infinity so knowing that the range of f h is a subset of 1 to infinity doesn't really tell us much because you know okay so what we need to do is to go figure it out now how do we figure it out well using the 
composite function concept that we learned earlier on now fh means well we'll h first then f okay because fh means you substitute into h and then the value substitute into h, uh, f okay so now this is the domain of h okay domain of h whatever they throw into h you will get the range of h now the range of h will give us negative 1 over e to 0 okay inclusive so now this middle egg here okay is our range of h okay but we do know that the domain of f is way greater okay because domain of f is from negative 1 to infinity isn't it okay so there are a lot of other values all over the place here but we're not really interested in that what we're most interested in is okay now with this domain of negative 1 over e to 0 what do I get okay under f so what do I do is actually very simple now we will study our f let me reconstruct a bigger sketch of our fx out here so that we can have a better discussion better view now our fx looks a little like this okay this is the domain and that is why our negative 1 over e to 0 can be fitted into this domain of f okay negative 1 to 0 all right now but what we want to know now is okay negative 1 over e should be somewhere around here this is negative 1 over e okay now what I want to know is if I put in negative 1 over e into f okay I'm going to label this here this is fx into f now this value okay what is this value and of course I know that if I go all the way to 0 and uh, this I will end up with 1 okay so what I want to know is if I were to put in this values into f okay what kind of range am I getting so the, the kind of range I'm getting is here isn't it okay so it will be from this value to 1 okay this will be the range and of course you, you do know that the range of f actually goes all the way to infinity right but we don't really care because these values here will come from the other values of x okay these other values so this uh, x1 x2 x3 whatever values they have will give you all these y values so all these values are all here all over the place okay and you don't really care because you won't be able to get all these rate values from h at the first place because it is not in the range of h okay i hope you're still following me it's a little bit heavy here Alright, so what we do is we'll substitute in x equals to negative 1 over e into our f and this is what we get. So f negative 1 over e will give us something like this. Okay, 1 over 1 minus 1 over e square. Okay, and of course after you simplify this, make common denominator, yada yada, okay, you have no problem with all this. I hope okay you will get something a little like this what this means is that well this value here okay this y value here is our e square over e square minus one okay we don't really care what number is this but that's it okay so this will be the range the upper limit of the range the lower limit is a one okay excluding one so why because you know we cannot be equal to zero at the first place okay so therefore the range of f h okay will be equal to 1 to e square over e square minus 1 now inclusive our e square over e square minus 1 but excluding the 1 all right why well, because at the first place how do we get 1 we get 1 when x is equal to 0 but because we cannot have x equal to 0 we exclude 0 here remember so this y value this range will not be able to get the take the value of one okay likewise uh, we included okay included the value of what negative one over e and therefore we should include this y value okay inclusive so um, that's all for this question